Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Today I have my non-linear mug again, which means it's time for another episode of non-linear books. I will link down below a playlist to where you can find the rest of my non-linear book series. Basically in this series I talk about books that do not follow a chronological linear pattern. Previously I've done a video on novels with multiple narrators, on novels that are structured like a series of interconnected short stories, and on books that are dual narratives. But today I'm going to be talking about books that are frame narratives, so books that are stories within stories, because I really really love these kind of books. So, I have four books to talk to you about today. Let's go. So I'm going to go in chronological order, which means first I'm going to talk about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which is from 1818, I believe. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you, you probably know a little bit about it. It is about a man called Frankenstein who is a scientist and through various experiments ends up creating a creature who he kind of brings to life. And then he kind of abandons this creature and it all kind of goes back on him in a not, not very nice way and things don't turn out very well for either Frankenstein or his monster. But to explain how the frame narrative works in this. The book begins with letters by a man called Mr Walton who is an explorer and he is writing letters to his sister and in these letters he explains that he's met this man on his travels called Victor Frankenstein and he begins to tell his sister through his letters the story that Victor Frankenstein is telling him. And then within Victor Frankenstein's story at some point in this novel we also get the story that the monster tells to Frankenstein. So we have these letters and within these letters we have Frankenstein's story and within Frankenstein's stories we have the monster story which I think is a really interesting narrative structure because especially the monster story you get it like third hand almost so we're getting what Walton says that Frankenstein says that the monster says and especially when the monster Frankenstein's creature reports a dialogue within his story you're getting that like fourth hand and I, I really love that one of the things I think is really interesting about frame narratives is they really question like the possibility of truth and the reliability of various sources especially when they're stories that are being told at some kind of distance from the past because you know that everything is always going to be unreliable and the fact that we get the monster story through Frankenstein's through Walton means that we never get to like properly access how he feels and how he thinks we always get it through like these different screens that are kind of shutting us off from the truth of the situation which I think is really really interesting but it also means that we get an outside perspective on various things so Frankenstein is quite an unreliable narrator in many ways and he's kind of bound up in many of his own thoughts. One thing I did find interesting when I read Frankenstein is that I'd always imagined Frankenstein as a character to be really proud and kind of arrogant. That was a vision we have of him in popular culture and actually in the book he's just young and kind of stupid. I thought that was really interesting and the fact that you see Frankenstein through his own eyes but also through this outside perspective of Walton really gives you a kind of new image of him as a character which I think is really cool. So yes there we go. Very interesting frame narrative in Frankenstein. And the next book I want to mention is Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights which is one of my favourite novels of all time in my top five. It is beautiful and brilliant and it is a frame narrative. So in Wuthering Heights we have a man called Mr Lockwood who goes to stay in this Yorkshire moor kind of setting where there's not many people for many miles around and he gets told a story by his housekeeper Mrs Dean. Mrs Dean tells him the story of these local residents. She tells him the story of Heathcliff who Mr Lockwood has met and of a woman called Cathy who the Heathcliff loved when he was younger but within Mrs Dean's story we do get many other little stories that crop up so lots of other characters narrate Isabella Linton, Heathcliff, Cathy at times they have very long pieces of dialogue where they are telling stories within stories within stories which I just think is wonderful that's just something I love about frame narratives I think it is so brilliant. Wuthering Heights is at times a kind of creepy and unsettling novel and the fact that you're always at this many removes from the actual story and that you can never really get to the truth of it really does kind of bring out that sort of atmosphere of mystery and the fact that you can't ever really know the truth or understand people. And although Mrs Dean is telling this narrated oral story to Lockwood and he's writing it down in his diary, there's even one moment where Lockwood briefly admits that he is kind of condensing and cutting and slightly editing Mrs Dean's story, which I think is fascinating because it gives you this other remove, this other full bit of the truth that you're not quite getting. Again, as I think I've mentioned before about Wuthering Heights, it is at times quite a supernatural novel, or there are certain things in it which could be read as supernatural but they can always be explained rationally and one thing that this kind of frame narrative device has is it really encourages the reader to make up their own mind about what is going on with the events because you're not being told by one character what happened you're getting all these different visions from all these different characters always like mediated through the others it's the same with how you view all the characters in Wuthering Heights because you rarely see many of them directly and you often see them through many people's eyes and mediated through many layers of perspective which means you can never quite get to the truth of so many of these characters but it also means 
means that you get to see them from a lot of different angles, which I really enjoy. Another fascinating thing about the narrative perspective in Wuthering Heights and the structure of it is that Mrs Dean, this housekeeper who's telling the story to Mr Lockwood, she is not a central character exactly. She is a perspective, she is a viewpoint, but she tells us very little about herself. She's called Mrs Dean, but no mention to her husband or why she's called Mrs Dean is ever mentioned. It's possible that she's called Mrs Dean just because she's an older woman but she's not actually married and so they just kind of refer to her as that. Or it's possible that she's married and that we just never find out anything about her husband. Likewise, because the story is told through these many mediated characters and because it's always Nellie Dean's perspective on events and she's a servant, we never see certain things which would make the book hang together more. Like there are certain scenes which are of crucial importance which we never see. For example, we never see Heathcliff and Cathy alone together and there are certain things between Heathcliff and Isabella or Edgar and Cathy and younger Catherine and Hareton. There are a lot of scenes which we know occur that we never see because Nellie Dean is not present and one of the things I often find whenever they make a TV adaptation or a film of Wuthering Heights I've never seen one that I think works and I think part of the reason why is because in the book you never see Cathy and Heathcliff alone together and that just doesn't work on film so you have to invent all this other stuff which really kind of spoils the complexities of this book in my opinion. Anyway I'm sure maybe one day they'll make a film that works but I haven't found one yet. I love the narrative structure of Wuthering Heights. I think it's so odd and so brilliant and kind of just adds to this idea that you can't get at the truth because you're being told a story within a story. You can just never get properly to the centre of that. You can never really understand Heathcliff because he's always being narrated through various perspectives and whenever you hear directly from him you're always hearing from him through Nelly, through Lockwood and I think that is very very interesting as a form. So yes, there we go another great book. Next I want to mention The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This is my favourite contemporary novel of all time. It's my favourite novel written in the 21st century. I think it is absolutely brilliant and it has a frame narrative and it's such a good frame narrative. So basically in The Thirteenth Tale there is a woman called Margaret Lee and she goes to visit this eccentric old author Viva Winter who has been massively famous throughout her lifetime and Viva Winter says to Margaret Lee that she is going to tell her the story of her life so that Margaret Lee can write a biography of her before she dies. So the book is half the story of Margaret Lee writing this story for her and her kind of interactions with Viva Winter and it's half Viva Winter's story that she tells Margaret Lee and Viva Winter is a very unreliable narrator and she tells the story but she doesn't quite tell the full truth and there's a lot of kind of mystery and confusion in there that Margaret Lee has kind of pieced together and that you piece together as you read it. This book I think it's so good. I mean I love this book for many reasons. One of which is that Margaret Lee before she goes to write this biography she works in an old bookshop with her father and it's in many ways a book about the love of books and literature and stories which is brilliant and it has a frame narrative and an unreliable narrator just all, all the things I love and it's like modern gothic and there are lots of references to Jane Eyre and it has like an ambiguous time setting as well. it's just just great overall just brilliant and I love the way the frame narrative is set up and the way it is so unreliable and I love that we see Viva Winter through Margaret Lee's eyes and then we also get the story that Viva Winter is telling and at the same time as Viva Winter tells the story of this place this old house Angelfield Margaret Lee goes back to see this house and we kind of get to piece together things from both sides of the story from like the now and the then and it's just brilliant it has one of the best mysteries ever, one of the best reveals ever to have existed in a novel. It's just so good and the frame narrative just makes it brilliant. It's a, yeah, what a great book. Right, moving on. And finally, the fourth frame narrative novel I have to tell you about today is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothford, which I have only read recently in the last month, and I think it's really, really brilliant. I thought it was so good, one of the best fantasy novels I've read, possibly my favourite adult fantasy book that I've read. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I'm very excited to read the second one at some point. This was beautiful, the writing is lovely, and it is frame narrative, which, as I have said already, I really like. This story begins in an inn in a town in this fantasy world, and a man called Chronicler, a man who has made his living by telling stories comes to this inn because he has heard rumours that the innkeeper there, a man called Coat, may actually be a famous, slightly legendary sorcerer called Croth. Quoth, I think that's how you say his name, and he comes and kind of ends up persuading Quoth to tell them his story. In the 13th tale I would say that the narrative that is being framed and the narrative that is the frame probably occupy almost equal weight within the story, whereas this is definitely focused on Quoth's story. Once you get into it you are mostly in that and you are not that much in the present, but there are a few kind of intricacies and intrigues in the present that give you a sense of what might come in the future and I have a feeling that maybe in the second and third books in the series the frame may become of equal weight and as important or at least a bit more important than it is currently. 
in comparison to the narrative that is being framed, the story that Quoth is telling. But I really like the way the frame narrative is done in this because it means you get a little access to Quoth's world and this world that these characters inhabit before you get back into Quoth's story. And you also get a sense of what is to come. You get a sense of not quite impending doom, but you, you know that Quoth has done some amazing things in his life and you also know that he is now kind of hiding and in retirement. And even though he's not that old, you know, it hasn't been that long, but he's now in this inn and you don't quite know why. So you're kind of trying to piece together what happened to get him from where he is in the story he is telling to now in the present. I also think the character of Quoth's assistant in the present is really really interesting and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how he meets him later. Another reason why I really like the fact that this is a frame narrative is Quoth is kind of at times a bit of an arrogant character. He reminds me a lot actually of Pip from Great Expectations and at times I find myself a tiny bit frustrated with him but because he's telling his own story and because we have this frame kind of showing that he's telling his own story you do get a sense of the fact that he might be a slightly unreliable narrator and this is part where he's talking about this woman he's desperately in love with and how beautiful she is and then we jump back into the kind of frame the present day and um, his assistant comments that he's met her once and actually she's not that beautiful and those kind of hints at potential inaccuracy and unreliability in Quoth's narrative I really enjoy I think they're they're really good the other thing I really love in this story is that within this fantasy world and within the kind of culture and ethnicity that Quoth comes from there is this real culture and tradition of storytelling so you kind of believe what's going on you believe that he's telling this complicated story because they have this culture of storytelling so it feels real and believable there's also a lot of implications that he's missing certain things out or dwelling on parts of the story such as his romance over the the dark and the pain that he feels and I, I like that we get those hints within the frame that within the main narrative there are certain things that Quoth might be holding back. I think that works very effectively and I'm definitely looking forward to reading the rest of this series. So yes, I think those are all the books I wanted to talk to you about today in my episode of Frame Narratives. The next episode of Nonlinear Books, when it turns up in a month or whenever I decide to film it, will probably be on books that do interesting things with time and are not chronological because there are a lot of them I love as well. That will appear at some point. In the meantime, I'll be back on Thursday with another video and happy reading. Let me know if you've read any of these books before. Please let me know also if you've read the second and Name of the Wind, the one after it, I can't remember what it's called, and if you like that one, because I'm very, very excited to read it. I will see you all very soon. In the meantime, happy reading.